Hi guys, it's the 20th of January, 2021. Today I'm going to read 1 King 6 to 10, Psalm 22, and Proverbs 20. Let's get started. Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord. It was 480 years after the Israelites came up out of Egypt. And it was in the fourth year. It was in the fourth year of Solomon's rule over Israel. He started in the second month. That was the month of Ziv. The, the king, the temple king Solomon built for the Lord was 90 feet long. It was 30 feet wide and it was 45 feet high. The temple had a porch in front of the main hall. The porch was as wide as the temple itself. It was 30 feet wide. It came at 15 feet from the front of the temple. Solomon made narrow windows high up in the temple walls. He put side rooms around the temple. They were built against the walls of the main hall and the most holy room. On the first floor, the side rooms were seven and a half feet wide. On the second floor, they were nine feet wide. And on the third floor, they were ten and a half feet wide. Solomon made the walls of the temple thinner as they went up floor by floor. The result was ledges along the walls. So the floor beams of the side rooms rested on the ledges. The beams didn't go into the temple walls. All the stones near the, used for building the temple were shaped where they were <clears throat> where they were cut. So hammers, chisels and other iron tools can be heard where the people were, where the temple was being built. The entrance of the to the first floor was on the south side of the temple. The stairway led up to the second floor. From there it went on up to the third floor. So Solomon built the temple and finished it. He made its roof out of the end instead of walls. He built side rooms all around the temple. Each room was seven and a half feet high. They were joined to a temple by set of beams. <clears throat> if the, a message came to Solomon from the Lord. The Lord said, You are now building this temple. Follow my orders. Keep my rules. Obey all my commands. And then I will make the promise I gave you, Father David, come true. I will do it through you. I will live among my people, Israel. I will not desert them. Solomon built the temple and finished it. He put set of boards on the inside walls. He covered them from floor to ceiling. He covered the temple floor, all with Geneva boards. He put up a wall 30 feet from the back of the temple. He made it with set of boards from floor to ceiling. And he formed a room inside the temple. There was the most holy room. The main hall in front of the room was 60 feet long. The inside of the temple was covered with set of wood. Gods and open flowers were carved on the wood. Everything was said. There wasn't any stone showing anywhere. Solomon prepared the most holy room inside the temple. That's where the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord would be placed. The most holy room was 30 feet long. It was 30 feet wide. And it was 30 feet high. Solomon covered the inside of it with pure gold. He prepared the cedar altar for burning incense. He covered it with gold. Solomon covered the inside of the main hall with pure gold. He placed gold chains across the front of the most holy room. That room was covered with gold. So Solomon covered the inside of the whole temple with gold. He also covered the altar for burning incense with gold. It was right in front of the most holy room. For the most holy room, Solomon made a pair of cherubs. He made them out of olive wood. Each cherub was 15 feet high. One wing of the first cherub was 7.5 feet long. The other wing was also 7.5 feet long. So the wings measured 15 feet tip to tip. The second cherub's wings also measured 15 feet from tip to tip. The two cherubim had the same size and shape. Each cherub was 15 feet high. Solomon placed the cherubim inside the most hollow room in the temple. Their wings were spread out. The wingtip of one cherub touched one wall. The wingtip of the other touched the other wall. The tips of their wings touched one each other in the middle of the room. Solomon covered the cherubim with cloth on the wall. On the walls all around the temple, he carved trees, palm trees, and open flowers. He carved them on the walls of the most holy room and the main hall. He also covered the floors of those two rooms with gold. For the entrance to the most holy room, he made two doors out of olive wood. Each door was one fifth of the width of the most holy room. On the two olive wood doors, he carved trees, and palm trees, and open flowers. He covered the cherubim and palm trees with ham and gold. In the same way, he made olive wood doorposts for the entrance to the main hall. 
A store page was one fourth of the width of the hall. He also made two doors out of Geneva wood. Each door had two parts. They turned in bases shaped like cups. He carved a ribbon, palm trees, and opened flowers on the doors. He covered the doors with gold. He hammered the gold evenly over the covers. He used blocks of stone to build a wall around the inside courtyard. The first three layers of the wall were made out of stone. The top layer was made out of beautiful silver wood. The foundation of the Lord's Temple was laid in Solomon's fourth year. It was in the month of Ziv. The temple was finished in his eleventh year. It was in the month of Bo. That was the eighth month. Everything was finished just as the plans required. Solomon had spent seven years building, his, building the temple. But it took Solomon 13 years to finish constructing his palace and the other buildings related to it. He built the palace of the forest of Ben. It was 150 feet long. It was 75 feet wide. And it was 45 feet high. It had four rows of cedar columns. It held a beautiful cedar beam. Above the beams was a roof made out of cedar boards. It rested on the columns. There were three rows of beams with 15 in each row. The total number of beams was 45. The windows of the palace were placed high up in the walls. They were in groups of three, and they faced each other. All the doorways had frames shaped like triangles. They were in front, and they they were in groups of three, and they faced each other. Solomon made a covered area. It was seventy-five feet long, and it was forty-five feet wide. Its roof was held up by columns. In front of it was a porch. In front of that were pillars and a roof that went down beyond. The Beyond them. Solomon built the hall, built the throne hall. It was called the Hall of Justice. That's where he would serve as judge. He covered the hall with cedar boards from floor to ceiling. The place, the palace where he would live, was set farther back. His plan was something like the plan for the hall. Solomon had married Pharaoh's daughter. He made a palace for her. It was like the hall. All those buildings were made out of blocks of good quality stone. They were cut to the right size. They were made smooth on their back and front sides. Those, smooth, those stones were used for the outside of each building and for the large courtyard. They were also used from the foundations up to the roofs. Large blocks of good quality stone were used for the foundations. Some were 15 feet long, others were 12 feet long. The walls around them were made out of good quality stones. The stones were cut to the right size. On top of them was a layer of cedar beams. beams. The large courtyard had a wall around. The first three layers of the wall had, were made out of blocks of stone. The top layer was made out of beautiful cedar wood. The same thing was done with the inside courtyard of the Lord's Temple and its porch. King Solomon sent messengers to Tyre. He answered them to bring Huram back with them. Huram's mother was a widow. He was from the tribe of Naphtali. Huram's father was from Tyre. He was skilled in working with bronze. Huram also had great skill, knowledge, and understanding in working with bronze. He came to King Solomon and did all the work he was asked to do. Huram made two bronze pillars. Each of each of them was 27 feet high and each of, each was 80 feet away. Each pillar had a decorated top made out of bronze. Each top was seven and a half feet high. Chains that were linked together hung down from the tops of the pillars. And there were seven chains for each top. Huram, Huram made two rows of pomegranates. <clears throat> and they circled the chain. The pomegranates decorated the tops of the pillars. Huram did the same thing for each pillar. The tops of the, the tops on the pillars of the porch were shaped like lilies. The lilies were six feet high. On the tops of both pillars were two hundred pomegranates. They were in rows all around the tops. They were above the part that was shaped like a bowl and they were next to the chain. Huram set the pillars up at the temple porch. The pillar on the south he named Jacket. The one on the north he named Boaz. The tops of the pillars were shaped like lilies. So the work on the pillars was finished. Huram made a huge male bowl for him. <coughs> its shape was round. It measured 15 feet from rim to rim. It was 7.5 feet high and it was 45 feet around. Below the rim there was a circle of girds all around the bowl. In every t 18 inches around the bowl, there were 10 girds. The girds were arranged in two rows. They were made as part of the bowl itself. The huge bowl stood on 12 bowls. Each, three of them faced north, three faced west, three faced south, and then three faced east. The bowl rested on top of the bowls. Their rear ends were toward the center. The bowl was three inches thick. 
Its rim was like the rim of a cup. The rim was shaped like the bloom of a lily. The bowl held 12,000 gallons of water. Hurem made an Hurem also made ten strands out of bronze. They could be moved around. Each stand was six feet long. It was six feet wide, and it was four and a half feet high. Here is how the strands were made. They had, they had sides that were joined to posts. On the sides and between the posts were lions, bulls, and cherubim. They were also on all the posts. Above and below the lions and bulls were rests made out of hammered metal. Each stand had four bronze wheels and bronze, with bronze axles. Each stand had a bowl that rested on the four supports. The stand had rests on each side. There was a round opening on the inside of each stand. The opening had a frame 18 inches deep. The sides were 27 inches high from the top of the opening to the bottom of the base. There was carving around the opening. The sides of the stands were square, not round. The four wheels were under the side. The axles of the wheels were connected to the stand. Each wheel was 27 inches across. The wheels were made like chariot wheels. All the axles, rims, spokes and hubs were made out of metal. Each stand had four handles on it. There was one on each corner. They came out from the stand. At the top of the stand, there was a round band. It was nine inches deep. The sides and supports were connected to the top of the stand. Hurem carved cherubim, lions, and palm trees on the sides of the stand. He also carved them on the surfaces of the supports. His carving covered every open space. He, also had, he had also carved rests all around. That's how he made the tent stand. All of them were made in the same molds, and they had the same size and shape. Then Hurem made ten bronze bowls. Each one held 240 guns. The bowls measured six feet across. There was one bowl for each of the tent stands. He placed five for the stand, five of the stands on the south side of the temple. He placed the other five on the north side. He put the huge bowl on the south side. It was at the northeast corner of the temple. He also made the pots, shovels, and sprinkling blocks. So Hurem finished all the work he had started for King Solomon. Here's what he made for the Lord's Temple. He made the two pillars. He made the two tops for the pillars. The tops were shaped like bowls. He made the two sets of chains that were linked together. They decorated the two bowl-shaped tops of the pillars. He made the 400 pomegranates for the two sets of chains. There were two rows of pomegranates for each chain. He decorated the bowl-shaped tops of the pillars. He made the ten strands with stands with their ten bowls. He made the huge bowl. He made the twelve bowls that were under it. He made the pots, shovels, and sprinkling bowls. Hurem made all those objects for King Solomon for the Lord's Temple. He made them out of bronze. Then he shined them up. The king had made them in clay molds. It was done on the plain of the Jordan River between Sakoth and Zephyr. Solomon didn't weigh any of his lips. There were too many of them to weigh. No one even tried to weigh the bronze they were made out of. Solomon also made everything in the Lord's Temple. He made the golden altar. He made the golden table for the holy bread. He made the pure gold lampstand. There were five on the right and five on the left. They were in front of the most holy ring. He made the gold flowers. He made the gold lamps and tops. He made the bowls with cutters, sprinkling bowls, dishes, and shower cups for burning incense. All of them were made out of pure gold. He made the gold bases for the doors of the inside room. That's the most holy ring. He also made gold bases for the doors of the main hall of the temple. He saw and finished the, all the work for the Lord's temple. Then he brought in the things his father David had set apart for the he included the silver and gold and all the other things for the Lord's temple. Solomon placed the with the other treasures that were there. Then King Solomon sent for the elders of Israel. He told them to come to him in Jerusalem. They included all the leaders of the church. And he also included the chiefs of the families of Israel. Solomon wanted them to bring up the ark of the Lord's covenant from Zion. Zion was the city of David. All the Israelites came together to where King Solomon was. It was at the time of the Feast of Booths. The feast was held in the month of Ethanim, Ethanim, and that's the seventh month. All the elders of Israel arrived, and the priests picked up the ark and carried it. They brought up the ark of the Lord. They said, brought up the tent of meeting and all the sacred things in the tent. The priests and Levites carried everything up. The entire community of Israel had gathered around King Solomon. All of them were in front of the ark. They sacrificed huge numbers of sheep and cows. There were so many animals that they couldn't be recorded. In fact, they couldn't even be counted. The priests brought the ark of the Lord covenant law to its place in the most holy room of the temple. They put it under the wings of the Jerusalem. There were 
Some say spirit air, air will replace where the ark was. They covered the ark. They used to cover the poles he used to carry. The poles were very long. Their ends could be seen from the holy room, in front of the most holy room, but they could be seen from outside the holy room. They are still here to this day. There wasn't anything in the ark except the two stone tablets. Moses had placed them in, in it at Mount Hor. That's where the Lord had made a covenant with Israel. He made it after they came out of Egypt. The priests left the holy room, then the clouds of the temple of the Lord. The priests can do their work with their spirit. That's because the glory of the Lord filled his temple. Then Solomon said, Lord, you have said you would live in a dark land. As you can see, I've built a beautiful temple for you. You can live in it forever. The whole community of Israel was standing there. The king turned around and gave them his blessing. Then he said, I praise the Lord. He is the God of Israel. With his own mouth, he made a promise to be my father David. With his own powerful hand, he made it come true. He said, I have brought my people Israel out of Egypt. <clears throat> Ever since, I have I haven't chosen any a city in any tribe of Israel where a temple could be built for my name. <clears throat> but I have chosen David to rule over my people Israel. With all his heart, my father David wanted to build a temple. He wanted to do it so the Lord could put a name there. The Lord is the God of Israel. But the Lord spoke to my father for David. He said, with all your heart, you wanted to build a temple for my name. It is good that you wanted to do that. But you will not build the temple. Instead, your son will build the temple for my name. He is your own flesh and blood. The Lord has kept the promise he made. I have become the next king after my father David. Now I'm sitting on the throne of David. That's exactly what the Lord promised would happen. I've built the temple where the Lord will put his name. He is the God of Israel. I've provided a place for the ark there. The tablets of the Lord's covenant were inside. He made that covenant with that people among them. He made it when he built the Maria. Then Solomon stood in front of the Lord's altar. He stood in front of the whole community of Israel. He spread out his hands toward heaven. He said, Lord, you are like the God you are the God of Israel. There is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You keep the covenant you made with us. You show us your love. You do that when you when we follow you with all our hearts. You have kept your promise to my father David. He was your servant. With your mouth you made a promise. With your powerful hand you have made a come true. And today we see we can see. Well, you are the God of Israel. Keep the promises you made for for my father day, to my father day. Different. He was your servant. Here's what he said to him. Your son from your family line will sit before me on the throne of Israel. This will always be true if your children after you are careful in everything they do. They must live in my sight faithfully the way you live. God of Israel, let your promise to my father David come true. But will we really live on earth? After all, the heavens can't hold you. In fact, even the highest heavens can't hold you. So this temple I've built certainly can't hold you. But please pay attention to my prayer. Lord my God, be ready to help me as I make my appeal to you. Listen to my cry for help. Hear the prayer I'm praying to you today. Let your eyes look toward this temple night and day. He said, I will put my name in. So please listen to the prayer I'm praying toward this place. Hear me when I ask you to help us. Listen to your people, Israel, when they pray toward this place. Listen to us from heaven. It's the place where you live. When you hear us, forgive us. Suppose someone does something wrong to their name, and the person who has done something wrong is required to give their word. They must tell the truth about what they have done. They must come and do it in front of your altar in this temple. When they do, listen to, to them from heaven. Take action. Judge between the person and their neighbor. Punish the guilty one. Do what they do to that person what they have done to their neighbor. Deal with the one who isn't guilty in a way that shows they are free from blame. No proof they are guilty. Suppose your people Israel have lost the battle against their enemies, and suppose they have sinned against you, but they turn back to you and praise your name. They pray to you in this temple, and they ask you to help them. Then ask, then listen to them from heaven. Forgive the sin of your people Israel. Bring them back to the land you gave. You gave to the people who live longer. Suppose your people have sinned against you, and because of that, the, side, the sky is closed up and there isn't any rain. But your people pray toward this place. They pray you for, <clears throat> they praise you by admitting they have sinned. They, and they turn away from their sin because you have made them suffer. And listen to them from heaven. Forgive the sin of the sin of your people. Israel. Sin, teach them the right way to live. Sin rain on the land you gave them as they should. 
So Pirate Day isn't enough for the ignore. And a plague strikes the land. The hot winds completely dry up our crops. Well locusts and grass or grasshoppers come and eat them up. <clears throat> Where an enemy surrounds one of our cities and get ready gets ready to attack. Well trouble or sickness comes. But suppose one of your people faced you. He asks you to help. They are aware of how much they're in hard to suffer. And they spread out their hands toward this temple to pray. Then listen to them from heaven. It's the place where you live. Forgive them. Take action. Deal with everyone and keep them with everything they do. You know their hearts. In fact, you are the only one who knows every human heart. Your people will have respect for you. They will respect you as long as they are in the world. And you gave our people long ago. Suppose they are outside. They are outsiders who don't belong to your people. Is it? And they have come from a land far away. They've come because they've heard about your name. When they get there, they'll find out even more about your great name. They'll hear about how you reached out your mighty hand and powerful arm. So they'll come and pray toward the temple. Then listen to them from heaven. And it's the place where you live. Do what the outsiders ask you to do. Then all the nations on earth will know you. They'll have respect for you. They'll respect you just as you know you, as your own people is out there. They'll know that your name is in the house of the Suppose your people go to war against their enemies. And it, it doesn't matter where you send. And suppose they pray to you toward the city. They, you have to, they pray toward the temple of built for your name. And then listen to them for, from heaven. Listen to the prayer for your help. Stand up for them. Suppose your people sin against you. After all, there isn't anyone who doesn't sin. <clears throat> and suppose you get angry with them. You hand them over to their enemies, then take them as prisoners to their own land. It doesn't matter whether those lands are near or far away. But suppose your people change their ways in the land. When they are held as prisoners, they turn away from their sins. They beg you to help them in the land of those who won, them, who won the battle over them. They say, we've sinned, we've done what's wrong, we've done what is and they turn back to you with all their heart and soul. Suppose it happens in the land of their enemies who took them away as prisoners. There they pray to you toward the land you gave their people longer. They pray toward the city you have chosen. And they pray toward the temple I have built for your name. Then listen to them from heaven. It's the place where you live. Listen to their prayer. Listen to them when, you are, when they ask you to help them. Stand up for them. Your people have sinned against you. Please forgive them. Forgive them now. Forgive them for all the wrong things they've done against you. And may those who won the battle over them show mercy to them. After all, they are your people. They belong to you. You brought them out of Egypt. You brought them out of that furnace that they'll shine down and make you pure. Let your eyes be open to me when I ask you to help us. Let them be open to your people, Israel, when they ask you to help them. Pay attention to them every time they cry out to you. After all, you chose them out of all the nations in the world. You made them your very own. You did it just as you had an answer to serve Moses. That's when you brought out of Egypt your people of hunger. You are our Lord and King. Solomon finished praying. He finished asking the Lord to help his people. Then he got up from then he got up from in front of the Lord's altar. He had been down on his knees with his hands spread out toward heaven. He stood in front of the whole community of Israel. He blessed them with a loud voice. He said, I praise the Lord. He has given peace and rest to the people of Israel, to his people Israel. That's exactly what he promised to do. He gave his people good promises through his seven measures. Every single word of those promises have come, has come true. May the Lord our God be with us, just as he was with our people who lived long ago. May he never leave us. May he never desert us. May he turn our hearts to it. Then we will live the way he wants us to. We will obey the commands, rules, and directions he gave our people of long ago. I pray these words to the Lord our God. May he keep them close to him day and night. May he stand up for me. May he also stand up for us be pleasant. May he give us what we need every day. Then all the nations on earth will know that the Lord is God. Will, they'll know that there is no other God. And may you commit your lives completely to the Lord our God. May you live by his rules. May you obey his command. May you always do what as you are doing now. Then the king and the whole community of Israel offer sacrifices to the Lord. So when sacrifice friendship offerings to the Lord. He sacrificed 22,000 oxen. He also sacrificed 120,000 sheep and goats. So the king and the whole community set the 
said the temple of the Lord, the departure. On that same day, the king set the middle area of the courtyard apart to the Lord. It was in front of the Lord's temple. He created a solemn sacrifice of burnt offerings and grain offerings. He used to sacrifice the fat of the friendship offerings there. He did it there because the bronze altar that stood in front of the Lord was too small. It wasn't big enough to hold all the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat of the friendship offerings. At that time, Solomon celebrated the Feast of Booths. The whole community of Israel was with him. It was a huge crowd. People came from as far as away as Levi, Hamath, and the Wadi of Egypt. For seven days, they celebrated in front of the Lord our God. The feast continued for seven more days. They, that made a show of 14 days. On the following day, Solomon sent the people away. They asked the Lord to bless the king. Then they went home. The people were back. Their hearts were full of joy. That's because the Lord had done so many good things for his son, David, and his people. As Solomon finished building the Lord's temple and the Lord's house. He had accomplished everything he had planned to do. The Lord appeared to him a second time. He had already appeared to him at Gideon. The Lord said to him, I have heard you pray to me. I have heard you ask me to help you. You have built this temple. I have set it apart for myself. My name will be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. But you must walk faithfully with me, just as your father David did. Your heart must be honest. It must be without blame. Do everything I command you to do. Obey my rules and laws. Then I'll set up your royal throne over Israel forever. I promise your father David I will do that. I said to him, You will always have a son from a family line on the throne of Israel. But suppose all of you turn away from me, or your children turn away from me. You refuse to obey the commands and rules I serve other gods and worship them. Then I will remove Israel from the land. It is the land I give them. I will turn my back on this temple. I will do it even though I have set it apart for my name to be there. Then Israel will be hated by all the nations. They will laugh and joke about Israel. This temple will become a pile of stones. All those who pass by will be shocked. They will make fun of it. And they will say, Why has the Lord done a thing like this to the land, to this land and temple? People will answer, Because they have deserved the Lord they got. He brought out of Egypt their people of one God, but they have been holding on to other gods. They have been worshipping them. They have been serving them. That's why the Lord has brought all this horrible trouble on them. Solomon built the Lord's temple and the royal palace. It took him 20 years to construct those two buildings. King Solomon gave 20 towns in, Gal- in Galilee to Hiram, the king of Tyre. That's because Hiram had provided him with all the sin and Geneva logs he wanted. He had also provided Solomon with all the gold he wanted. Hiram had went from Tyre to see the town Solomon had given him, but he wasn't pleased with it. My friend, he asked, what have you given me? What have you given me? What kind of towns are these? So he called them the land of Kabul, and that's what they still, that's what they are still called to this day. Hiram had sent four and a half tons of gold to Solomon. King Solomon caused people to work hard for him. Here's a record of what they did. They built the Lord's temple and Solomon's palace. They filled in the low places. They rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. They built up Hazor, Megiddo, and Gezer. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had attacked Gezer and killed, captured it. He set it on fire. He had killed the king knights who lived there. Then he had given Gezer as a wedding gift to a daughter. She was Solomon's wife. Solomon rebuilt Gezer. He built up Lower Bethlehem and Balak. He built up Tadmor in the desert. All those towns were in his land. He built up all the cities where he could store things. He also built up the towns for his chariots and horses. He built anything he wanted to build in Jerusalem. The Bannon and all the territory he built him. There were still many people left in the land that who were in his land. They included the Moorites, Hittites, Perizzites, the Hivites, and Jebusites. They were, they were children of the people who had lived in the land before the Israelites came. Those people had been set apart to the Lord in a special way to be destroyed. But the Israelites had been able to kill all of them. Solomon forced them to work very hard as his slaves, and they still work for Israel as slaves to this day. But Solomon didn't force any of the Israelites to work as his slaves. Instead, some were his fighting men. Others were his government officials, his officers, and his captains. Others were commanders of his chariots and chariot drivers. Still others were the chief officials in charge of Solomon's projects. There were 550 officials in charge of those who did the work. Pharaoh's daughter moved from the city of David. 
up to the palace Solomon had built for them. After that, he filled in the low places near the palace. Three times a year, Solomon sacrificed burnt offerings and, sac- and friendship offerings. He built it to honor the Lord. Along with the offering, he burned incense to the Lord. So he carried out his duties for the temple. King Solomon also built ships at King Ezzi and Geba. It's near Elath in Edom. It's on the shore of the Red Sea. Hiram sent his men to serve on the ships together with Solomon's men. Hiram sailed as near the sea. All of them sailed to Ophir. They brought back 16 times of gold. They gave it to King Solomon. The Queen of Sheba heard about how famous Solomon was. She also heard about how he served and worshipped the Lord. So she came to test Solomon with hard questions. She arrived in Jerusalem with a very large group of attendants. The camels were carrying spices, huge amounts of gold, and valuable jewels. She came to Solomon and asked him about everything she wanted to know. Solomon answered all her questions. There wasn't anything too hard for the king to explain to her. So the queen of Sheba saw how very wise Solomon was. She saw the palace he had built. She saw the food on his table. She saw his officials sitting there. She saw the robes of the servants who waited on everyone. She saw his wine tasters. Then she saw the burnt offering Solomon sacrificed at the Lord's temple. She could hardly believe anything she had seen. She said to the king, Back in my own country, I heard a report about you. I heard about how much you had accomplished. I also heard about how wise you are. Everything I heard is true, but I didn't believe those things. So I came to see for myself, and now I believe it. You are twice as wise and wealthy as people say you are. The report I heard doesn't even begin to tell the whole story about you. How happy your people must be. How happy your officials must be. They always get to serve you and hear the wise things you say. May the Lord your God be praised. He takes great delight in you. He praised you on the throne of Israel. The Lord will love Israel for all time to come. That's why he has made you king. He knows that you will do what is fair and right. She gave the king four and a half tons of gold. She also gave him huge amounts of spices and valuable jewels. No one would ever bring to King Solomon as many spices as the Queen of Sheba gave him. Hiram ships or Hiram ships brought gold from a few. From there they also brought huge amounts of almug wood and valuable jewels. The king used the almug wood and to make support for the Lord's temple and the royal palace. He also used it to play to make harps and lyres for those who played the music. The, that much of Almug wood has never been brought into Judah or seen there since that day. King Solomon gave the Queen of Sheba everything she asked, she wanted and asked for. That was in addition to what he had given her out of the royal riches. Then she left. She returned to her own country with her attendants. Each year, someone received 25 tons of gold. That didn't include the money brought in by business and trade. It didn't. It also didn't include the money from all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the territories. King Solomon made 200 large shields out of hammered gold. Each one weighed 15 pounds. He also made 300 small shields out of hammered gold. Each one weighed seven and a half pounds. The king put all the shields in the palace of the forest of Levant. Then he made a large throne. It was covered with ivory, and that was covered with fine gold. The throne had six steps. Its back was an uh, rounded top. The throne had armrest on both sides of the sea. The statue of the lion stood on each side of the throne. Twelve lions stood on six steps. There was one at each end of each step. Nothing like that throne had ever been made for any other king. All of King Solomon's cups were made out of gold. All the things used in the palace of the first of Laban were made out of pure gold. Nothing was made out of silver. When Solomon was king, silver wasn't considered to be worth very much. He had many ships that carried goods to be traded. His ships went to sea along with Hiram ships. Once every three years, the ships returned. They brought gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. King Solomon was richer than all the other kings on, on earth. He was also wiser than than they were. People from the whole world wanted to meet Solomon in person. They wanted to see for themselves how wise God had made him. Year after year, everyone who came to him brought a gift. They brought gifts made out of silver and gold. They brought robes, horses, weapons, and spices. They also brought horses and mules. Solomon had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. He kept some of his horses and chariots in the chariot cities. He kept the others with him in Jerusalem. 
The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stone. He made cedar wood as common as there are seed more fig trees in the western hills. Solomon got horses from Egypt and from Ku. The royal traders brought them from Ku at the current price. They weighed out 15 pounds of silver for a chariot from Egypt, and they weighed out almost 4 pounds of silver for a horse. They also sold horses and chariots to all the kings of the Hittite and the kings of the Arameans. Proverbs 20 Why cause you to make fun of us, and be cause you to stop us? Anyone who is not led, anyone who is led astray by them is not wise. A king's anger brings terror like a lion's hole. Anyone who makes them angry may lose their life. Avoiding a fight brings on to a person, but every fault of person is quick to argue. Anyone who refuses to work doesn't plan on the right seed. When they look for a crop at harvest time, they don't find it. The purposes of a person are like you want, but the one who has understanding brings them out. Many claim to have love that never fails, but who can find a faithful person? They easy to do what is right, live without blame. Let's start their children after them. The king sits on his throne to judge. He gets rid of all evil when he sees it. No one can say, I've kept my heart pure. I'm clean and I haven't sinned. The Lord hates you. He hates ways that weigh things heavier or lighter than they really are. He also hates measures that measure things larger or smaller than they really are. Even small children are known by their actions. So is their conduct really pure and right? The Lord has made two things. He has made ears that hear. He has also made eyes that see. Don't let sleep or you will become full. Stay awake and you will have more food than you. It's no good. It's no good, says the Then off they go and brag about what they bought. There's gold and there are plenty of rubies. The lips that speak knowledge are like it. Are a priceless jewel. Take the coat of one who puts on money for a stranger. Hold it until you get paid back. If it is time for another side. If you gain by cheating, taste sweet. But you will end up with a mouthful of crap. Plans are made by asking for guidance. So if you go to war, get good advice. The person who talks about others tells secrets. So avoid anyone who talks too much. So if anyone asks for bad things to happen to their father and mother, that person's death will be blown out into darkness. Property that you claim to see will not be blessed in the end. Don't say, I'll get even with you for the wrong you did to me. Work with him and he'll make things right for you. The Lord hates ways that weigh things heavier or lighter than they really are. Skills that are not honest don't please them. The Lord directs a person's steps, so how can anyone understand their own way? A person is trapped if they make a hasty promise to God and don't believe any things about what they say. A wise king gets rid of evil people. He runs the, he runs the threshing wheel over them. The spirit of a person is the lamp of the Lord. He lights up what is deep down inside them. Love and truth keep a king safe. Favor love makes his throne to go. Young men are proud of this trend. Gray hair brings honor to old men. Those in rooms to rub evil away. And be making cruel to Psalm 22. So, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? Why do you seem so far away when I need you to save me? Why do you seem so far away that you can't hear my grip? My God, I cry in the daytime. But you won't answer. I cry out at night, but you won't let me sleep. But you rule from your throne. Yes, the whole world. Y'all the Lord God is our praises. Our people went up long ago, but they trusted me. They trusted in me, and you saved them. They cried, they cried out to you, and you were saved. They trusted in me, and you didn't let them go. Everyone treats me like a worm and not a man. They hate me and look down on me. All those who see me laugh at me. They shout at me and make fun of me. They shake their heads at me. They say, you trust in the Lord. Let the Lord help him. If the Lord is pleased with him, let him save him. But he brought me out of my mother's body. He made me trust in you, even when I was at my mother's breast. From the time I was born, you took good care of me. Ever since I came out of my mother's body, you have been my God. Don't be far away from me. Trouble is near, and there is no one to help me. Many enemies are all around me. They are like strong bulls from the land of Bashan. They are like royal lions that tear to pieces what they kill. They open their mouths wide to attack me. My strength is like water that is poured out on the ground. I feel as if my bones are connected. My heart is turned to wax. It is melted away inside me. My mouth is, is dried up like a piece of broken pottery. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You bring me down to the edge of the grave. A group of sinful people is closed in on me. They are all around me like a pack of dogs. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Everyone can see all my bones right through the, right through my skin. People stare at me. They laugh when I suffer. They divide up my clothes among them. They cast lots for what I am worth. Lord, don't be far away. Don't be so far away from me. You give me strength. Come quickly, tell me. Save me from being killed by the sword. Save the only life I have. Save me from the power of those dogs. Save me from the power of those lions. Save me from the haunts of those wild oxen. I will announce your name to my people. I will praise you among those who have gathered to worship me. You have respect for the Lord. Praise him. All you people of Jacob, honor him. All you people of Israel, 
worship him. He has not forgotten the one who was hurting. He has not turned away from his suffering. He has not turned his face away from him. That he is listening to his cry for help. Because of what you have done, I will praise you and the help of each of those who worship you. And for those who respect you, I'll keep my promises. Those who are poor will walk you and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise you. May their hearts be filled with new hope. People from one end of the earth to the other will remember and turn to the Lord. The people of all the nations will bow down in front of him. The Lord is king. He rules over the nations. All rich people of the earth will feast and worship God. All who go down to the grave will kneel in front of him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive will not. Those who are not yet born will serve him. Those who are born later will be told about him. And they will tell people who have not yet been born. The Lord has done what is right. Now that's done, I should now do the Lord's prayer. Please bow your hands. Our Father in heaven. Hell I be your name. Your kingdom come, you'll be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you must have given our debtors. There is none into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.